Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining and coming to play today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about a very beautiful program, and it's all about the energy of love. It's called Mune or Munai Ki. So today, I'm just going to be kind of welcoming and inviting you to sample and taste the, the sweetness and the essence of this divine offering and upcoming nine rites of initiation. So before we begin our journey together, which will include a little mini activation, chakra clearing, uh, and some meditations with our animal allies and archetypes, I'd love to hear from you uh, if you can just share if you have any experience or have ever heard of Munaiki, if you've received these attunements or if you've been on the bands of power call that we just had last weekend on Saturday. So please let me know your name, where you're calling in from. There is a chat box at the bottom or the left hand side of your screen. And please let me know so I can really have a better feeling and, and way of expressing these beautiful healing systems, this modality that's, that's existed from the beginning, probably of creation, thousands and thousands of years. So I'd love to hear if you have experience with it. So Thank you. Someone's calling in from Germany. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you and welcome. Welcome, sister. Yeah, we have people that are very attracted to Manai Ki and we have people from all over the world that signed up for today's um, introductory presentation. So please let me know if anyone has ever heard of Manai Ki or has taken a, a class or received a right from a shaman or it's just really interested in how this works or is somehow attracted to this, um, this beautiful energy. Um, so Manaiki is the, is a Keshuan word. Uh, and it, it really is all about the energy of love. Uh, Munai means love in the Keshuan language of the Andes. And key means energy. So together, it translates into the energy of love. And these are traditional rites of empowerment um, and a series of nine uh, rites and initiation practices, or you can think of them as energy or energetic transmissions. And it's based on ancient healing practices of the Kero shamans of the Andes and the Amazon. We know that uh, Alberto Villoldo, who is a very famous medical anthropologist, traveled to South America many years ago to study this medicine and the healing ways of the indigenous people. And he worked with them, lived with them, learned with them for several decades. And when he came back, he received permission to bring these lessons and these teachings traditions to the rest of the world to help us in the West and to assist in the uplifting of humanity. So these are gifts. The Manaiki rites are gifts in the form of energetic transmissions. And it's really meant to help all of us to wake up, to awaken uh, to a kinder and more compassionate uh, world and reality. It's creating a stronger connection with our guides, with our elders and teachers from the earth and from the stars. So these are like, you can think of the Munaiki rites as spirit seeds that are planted in our physical bodies. And they heal the wounds of the past, they transform our energy field, and they really open us up to the vast potential within us. So the Kero shares these carpes in Peru, in Machu Picchu, Lake Titicaca, 
when a person is ready to walk this Mesa path and create their own shamanic altar. So we're, I'm going to be talking about the rites and how you can receive them, be open to uh, embodying them and also feel confident and comfortable in passing them on to raise not only your vibration, but the vibration of all sentient beings, all divine humans uh, on the planet. And the energy of Munai Ki is profound, it's powerful, and it's also really direct. So it's about dissolving false beliefs, attachments, that no longer serve and support you, all of us, especially at this time. Um, there's a lot of rapid, accelerated transformation and it could feel really intense for empaths and sensitive souls like us. For people that are super psychic and telepathic, but it's about Really, it's about a readiness and a willingness to let go of the past and everything that we thought was true um, and to share our gifts, uh, to own them, honor them, and really be of service. And um, this timeline of this pre-ascension process that we're in right now and the era or the age of Mapo, um, which is a name for it in Buddhism, where everything seems to be breaking apart so it can come together in a whole new way and the divine feminine can reemerge again on the planet to open our hearts and to allow us to be kinder to ourselves and each other. This is about a transition from homo sapien to the new human, the homo luminous, light body or rainbow body. So today we'll be creating this ceremonial offering. I won't actually be attuning you to all nine rites because I'll be talking about how you could sign up for that program, which starts next weekend. But this is about really connecting deeply with your luminous energy field, how to feel and decipher, navigate the energies and your own energy, how to tell what belongs to you and what doesn't. So this is about practicing spiritual discernment and also about how you can master the art of alchemical transformation, as well as how to really deflect negative energies and clear heavy, which is known as hucha uh, in the Quechuan language, heavy, energies that have built up and are lodged in your field, how to tell that they're even there, how to feel more empowered and protected, and mostly how to connect with the wisdom of the lineage of luminous ones. And not only ancient teachers, Incas and pre-Incan shamans, uh, but also the Nustas or the Nustanas, which are the divine feminine goddesses, priestesses. Uh, these are um, the nature spirits from the mountains, rivers, and waters. So it's about connecting with all the elements of nature, how to ground the, the light, the energies, and how to receive clearer communication and messages from the spirit world. This is about really planting a new seed. And then it's up to you to cultivate, to grow these seeds of light, wisdom, and power that you'll be receiving in the weeks ahead. So it's deepening your relationship with yourself, with the elements. And it's also about learning how to become a compassionate healer, how to connect with this luminous, ancient lineage of healers from the past. But also really, it's about trusting your intuition as a powerful practitioner. So you can show up and be present and not get sucked into the dreams of the collective, but actually how to dream your own, your own visions into being. 
So this is about, these rights are about stewardship. They're not achievements. They're non-ego, non-judgmental. It's about reestablishing your position in the role, in, in the world, your soul role as a person of compassion and integrity. And it's also about not having to take anything personally. And it's about really being impeccable with your word and truly being of service. So let's go to actually, let me see if anybody chatted in. I'm gonna come back real quick to the chat box. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please know that I'm gonna be checking this chat box periodically throughout uh, today's session. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much for chatting in. We have someone else from the USA. Um, thank you, sister. Someone is saying hello. Thank you for today. You're very welcome. It's my honor and pleasure. Uh, someone else is calling in from Illinois. Awesome. The more the better. So this is not only something kind and loving um, and healing and empowering that we're doing for ourselves, but we're doing it for each other and the planet and all beings right? So we want to co-create a better future. Uh, we want to give back to Gaia Pachamama what she's given us for thousands and trillions of years of her nurturing and caring for us and nourishing us. We want to become, uh, it's called a Pampa Mesayok, Pampa Mesayok, which is an earth keeper, a gatekeeper, a daykeeper, a wisdom keeper. We want to, thank you, ah, sister. <laughs> so nice to see you, beautiful, yay. So we wanna give back, right? We wanna pass this forward. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit more and then we'll get right into some energy processes, which I'm very excited about. Okay. Beautiful. So the time of the great changes, would you agree, is definitely upon us. And we need something different, something greater, uh, something that's existed for centuries from the shamans of Peru. And they held the sacred prophecy of a time that would come when the world would turn, when harmony would be greatly restored and Munai, love and compassion would become the guiding principle. So these rights of love and power help us to fully step into this new era, this new paradigm, which hasn't yet been birthed yet. So it's up to us to co-create and to rebirth this world into something better, into something sustainable. Right, so this is about receiving and transmitting these great shamanic initiations and the time is now. We have no time to wait or to waste uh, on drama, on trauma, on conflict, on duality, on you know, right, wrong, good or bad, duality. So in the high mountains of the Andes, these ancient wisdom traditions have existed, like I mentioned, for thousands of years. And this paradigm is, a, is really all about returning home, residing in a sacred community with our true family, members of our family, of our tribe, wise and well, beings, friends, uh, partners who can connect with us and we can connect with them. And it's about really connecting with our spiritual ancestors, the ancient Lycas. These are the, the first teachers from thousands of years ago and they deeply care for us. And they've just been waiting, waiting and waiting very patiently for us to once again, become the earth keepers and wisdom holders, the stewards of a healthy, loving and kind planet. So just because you've said yes, and you've arrived and you're here, whether you're live with me now, or whether you'll 
you're living in a different time zone and you will have to listen to the replay. That means that you've already affirmed that there is a solution to the problems that we've been experiencing and recreating for thousands of years. So we are each other's family. It's also known as the A-L-U, A-Y-L-L-U, pronounced I-U, I-U. It's a, the family that you've always wanted, the family that feels more like a family than your blood family. And it's the one that loves, knows, and sweetly holds you as a sacred expression of living creation. So when you are attuned to Munaiki, it's like a homecoming. It's like a reunion, oh, a feeling of remembrance, of coming home again, where all of these luminous beings welcome you home, greet your soul and help you remember who you really are and who you are in the process of becoming. So this is a gift. And what I'll be talking to you about today in our time together and our precious time together, how you can learn how to manage your energy, how to navigate this reality how to manifest a sacred space, opening and closing your own personal sacred space so you're not uh, absorbing like a sponge all of the, the dualistic energies that are out there right now. Um, and this is about ritualistic healing, ceremonial healing, working with the land, with our ancestors. And this will connect you more deeply with your own luminous energy field. So it's about learning how to work with your energy, how to deflect negative or heavy hucha energetic buildup, or we call it psychic sludge or dross, debris. And this comes from the wisdom of a lineage of luminous ones who work from the spirit world and help you connect with your true nature. So this is about healing your relationship first with yourself, with the natural elements, with the earth, with the stars, with Gaia, Pachamama, and with each other. So some of the benefits are when you start receiving these rights, you'll start noticing changes in your energy field, the way you feel when you're traveling, when you're around other people. The way you feel in your physical body. Also, your healing abilities will develop and grow. Your creativity will flourish and thrive. Your intuition will strengthen. And you'll just find it easier on the whole to let go of fear and develop self-confidence. This is also um, a balancing and harmonization of your inner masculine and feminine. So this is a rebalancing, a recalibration when you receive the rights, the nine rights. And it's such a thorough, comprehensive healing system. And remember, you're connecting with the essence of universal love, with the unseen world of pure light and energy. You're connecting with the life force of the planet. And it's about being able to manifest easier that whatever you're thinking of will instantly manifest. So you want to just become focused, aware, and conscious, mindful of your thoughts and beliefs. So this is about leaving behind the old wounds and stepping fully into the blessings and the potential the opportunity of every single day that you open your eyes, that you take a breath and that you are here. So this is about learning how to slow down the aging process and to speed up overall recovery. And it's about taking a leap of faith, trusting that you're here to to give birth to a more authentic life. 
So healing the wounds from the past, from past lives, from your ancestors, from the womb, and any type of genetic or karmic inheritances that come along with it. So the Monaiki rites also reinform your DNA and enable you to grow a new body, a rainbow body that ages, heals, and dies differently. So I'm truly excited to introduce you and to awaken you to your pure potential. So you can evolve into your divine human identity. Again, these initiation rites from these ancient lineages of knowledge and power are grounding, but also expanding. They're nourishing, they're calming and soothing. And they also not only include Gaia, Pachamama, but the Palladian seven star sisters and the ancient Incan sun of creation, the high shamans of the Andes. And you'll also learn how to work with pie stones, with koyas, with these doorways between dimensions to create an opening, a portal, and to be able to step through into a different timeline into a higher dimensional vibration. And this is all based on these ancient prophecies that have been around forever. And they're, help, they're here to help us to evolve into this new human that we've been hearing about, but never really quite understood until now. So this training program will anchor the nine rites and seed them into your seven physical chakras, as well as the ones above and below us. So these are called the earth and the sky chakras. Um, and it's about cleansing, clearing, and turning on your luminous energy field, really cleaning it up and clearing it out, um, seeding and feeding your light body. and really connecting with the bodies of angels. First, our first ancient teachers, these angelic beings. And these rites have been passed on from generation to generation, from teacher to student in this lineage of luminous beings. We call them the luminous ones. So we're so grateful to the founder of the Four Winds Institute who emphasized over and over Alberto Villoldo again and again that when you unite your vision with your intent, the universe will actively conspire with you and miracles can happen when you work in the domain of the sacred. Beautiful. Well, let's begin and jump right into an opening prayer. <laughs> Hmm. Beautiful. So if you'd like, you can follow along. Yes, everyone will receive the replay tomorrow. You can follow along on your screen. And yeah, if you need to jump off at any time or if someone signs into the call today a little bit later than the time we agreed to meet, that's fine too, because you will receive the whole replay. So you can follow along with me. Let's open, create a sacred space so when we call, spirit can answer. So I'm just going to ask my lovely assistant to scroll down here. You can light a, smud, uh, a sage stick and smudge yourself with a feather like this. You can spray some Florida water or Palo Santo or any type of sage like cleansing spray. Clear your space, clear yourself. And let's begin by placing one hand over your, your heart, the left hand. And then the right hand, extend your hands and arm with open palm in receiving mode. And you can begin by standing up if you're able to and face the south, face the direction of the south. We're gonna call in the four directions now. And 
I'm gonna just get my drum and rattle. If you have a drum and rattle, you can join with me. Just kind of clear the space with my power rattle. The south, the west, the north, and the east. And all the way up and down, left and right, front and back of you, top and bottom of you. And if there's any place that feels tight, sore, stiff, tense, or heavy, just go ahead and rattle it out, shake it out, and allow the vibration, the sounds of the rattle to, to really break up any density or difficult, heavy energies. So I'm putting my rattle down. I'm just going to get my drum. But if you have a feather and some sage or palo santo or incense, whatever you're using, you know, go ahead and smudge yourself wherever you're feeling heavy or in fear, doubt, worry, stress, anxiety, and just brush yourself off and then just brush just smudge the corners of your room in every direction with your smudging fan. So this is like a brushing, a combing, a cleansing of your chakras, your nadis, meridians, front and back. And it feels really, really nice. So it's kind of like dusting yourself off. Any negativity, any energies from others, from conversations, from difficult energy vampires that you, has been in, uh, that's been in your field that you might have been interacting with even before the call. So please uh, drop those energies now to your feet, unzip your armor, and we're going to call in the directions. Begin by facing the south, calling in serpents, Sachamama Hatun Amaru, the great serpent mother of the waters, the rivers, the galaxies, and the roads that bring us together. Dear serpents, come wrap your coils of light around us. Teach us to shed the energies of the past, the way you shed your skin, the ones that no longer serve us. Show us how to walk softly on the earth in the beauty way so that we all touch, create, we're touched and created in beauty. A whole. And now face the west, north, south, east, west. Torongo, mother, sister, jaguar, huma. Come protect our medicine space and devour those energies which do not belong to us. Teach us your ways beyond fear, beyond anger, beyond death, beyond guilt, beyond shame, beyond all the mythologies, the lies, stories, false beliefs that we've been taught the conditioning, the programming, imprints, implants that no longer serve us in every dimension, in every direction. Teach us to be impeccable, luminous, peaceful warriors. No longer need to engage in drama, in battle, internally or externally, but instead are able to support ourselves and asking for and receiving what we need and desire. Allow us, mother, sister, jaguar, to leap into who we're becoming. Please face the West, extending your right hand and arm in this position, facing the West. Connecting with the elements of the West, with the medicine of the West leaping into who you are becoming, creating, co-creating from the space of pure love 
and we say a whole, whole, or a whole. Taking another nice deep breath in, please turn to the north, to the winds of the north. Grandmothers, grandfathers, ancient ones, ancestors, and guardians of this land, the Lenape land where I live and the land, the tribal lands that you live on. Come to us, teach us your ancient wisdom and the wisdom to come. We honor you who have come before us, the ones that will come after us. Help us to remember that ancient wisdom directly, to have a direct experience. Come warm your hands by our fires and whisper to us in the wind. Siwar Kenti, hummingbird, teach us to drink the nectar of life. Even when the contrast is great and the journey is difficult or long. Sweet hummingbird, help us to do that which seems impossible just as you do. Teach us to fly forward and backwards at the same time. Help us to create from a place of joy, not fear, a sense of timelessness, a whole. And now, please face, please face the east. Atun Kuntur, great condor, mountain bird, a condor, a bushen, Waman, eagle, ma, ha. Come to us from the place of the rising sun, the place of our becoming. And please teach us to soar high and vast above and beyond the density, drama, duality, and see those mountain peaks that you've only dared to dream of before. Help us to feel that we finally arrived at the top of the mountain. Help us to feel strong and solid like a mountain. And help us to see with the eyes of our heart, to feel guidance in our bodies to trust the guidance in our bodies, the wisdom, the broader perspective, the clearest vision of our true destiny. Take us under your wing and teach us to fly wingtip to wingtip with great spirit, opening your own power wings. Ho oh, ho, Pachamama, Santa Tierra Madre, Great Mother Earth, the Stone People, the plant people, the two-legged, the four-legged, the creepy crawler, the thin, the furred, and the winged ones, all our relations that are here not only to sustain us, but to bring us beauty and joy and teach us their medicine, helping us along the way. And you can now bow down, touching the ground. Thank you, Mother for sustaining us with your bounty, for supporting our healing work on your belly. for are always taking those energies which are too heavy for us and mulching them for us so that we no longer have to carry them. We turn all of this over to you. Please take it, recycle, repurpose, and transmute the heaviness into light, which we can no longer bear, the burdens we can no longer stomach. Set us free to create extraordinary, extraordinary lives filled with joy, abundance, love, and support. Oh, reaching up to the sky. Initatia, Father, Son, Mamakia, Grandmother, Moon, Hatun, Chaska, Star, Nation, Star, Brothers, Star, Sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for rising every day and showering us, bathing us with your light, your natural cycles, rhythms, your love that make life possible for us here. And help us to do this unconditionally without judgment. 
teach us, show us how to treat ourselves in this way. Reaching up to the sky now, pulling down the rays of the sun, drinking them in, feeling the warmth, the heat from our physical sun, from our Syrian second suns, and from all of the suns of creation. Thank you for bringing us together. Now placing your hands back on your heart, over your heart space. Thank you for allowing us to sing the song of life for one more day, to dance this dance of co-creation, to move our energies freely and fearlessly, to walk the beauty way. Thank you for holding us. Aho, ho, and ahum. Amen. Thank you. And taking a breath of the universe, breathing with the life force of the universe, we're going to move to the next activity of light. I'm going to just quickly reveal the great principles of Munaiki. Please find yourself a comfortable position to lean into these teachings, to learn and receive the energy medicine that you need but also to relax, rest, and digest it, to process this new information. The five great principles of Munaiki are nonviolence, bring no harm to yourself or others. So if you're willing to receive these five principles of truthfulness, integrity, moderation, and generosity, please chat in the chat box, yes. I am willing, I am open to receiving the five principles of Munaiki. I am willing to be true to my word and let my words be true. I am willing to practice honesty, thank you, sincerity, to never steal, lie, not even a glance, to walk our talk, to talk our walk, to live impeccably not take things personally, to wisely use this gift, this life force energy, and to be generous to all sentient beings, to give more than we take, for nothing in this world truly or really belongs to us. Practicing self-care, loving kindness, bringing no harm to ourselves or others, being true to our word, practicing healthy, strong boundaries, and really living an honest life authentically. Thank you for those that chatted in. For those that didn't, you have a moment to do that now. Walk your talk and talk your walk, as they say. So let's go to the next screen. All right, I have a little treat for you all today. So just relax, sit back. We're gonna, sh I've created a, uh, a sacred art show with healing images and light codes. So please sit back and enjoy them. You can keep your eyes open or if you feel tired or you're just releasing a lot, you can close them and watch the slides on the replay. I'm gonna go into the chakra archetype. So calling in the archetypes in a little mini meditation with great mindfulness, preparing you for the next four weeks of the nine rites of initiation to help you evolve into a divine new human. Allow yourself to connect with this ancient lineage, spirit keepers, We ask them now to come forward, divine masculine, sacred feminine, all the medicine men and women, the ones that lived for more than 500 years, 40,000 feet in the high Andes, the mountain peaks and tops of Machu Picchu 
and all the other Apus, the, all the other mountainous regions who learned these traditions, who were given these teachings directly from the Palladians. So please find a place, a space where you can truly relax and let go of any and all body tension, quieting your minds, your thoughts, ruminating thoughts, the past, the future, what happened, what can happen, or what might happen, letting all of that go. A release with a longer exhalation, any body tensions. Focus instead on the sounds of your breath, allowing your breath to be your anchor of mindfulness. And you can recite these lines along with me, Pachamama, Pachapapa, spirits of the Apus, the mountains, the keepers of the harmony, right? Help us to receive this healing process to strengthen our energy fields with this meditation, to meditate, to know not to meditate on the need to set a particular intention. So letting go of having to do that, but just drinking in the energy of just knowing what you know, just trusting what you already know as an infinite being. So I'd like to call in the first animal ally and archetype of chakra energy medicine. This is the great serpent. So rub your hands together. Imagine you're already in a sacred fire ceremony and that sacred fire, the candles, you could light a candle as long as it's in a safe container and you won't knock it over. You can do this later on the replay as well. Making sure there's some type of a small fire or a flame of light to gaze upon. And calling in great serpent, place your hands on your first chakra. So your hands are nice and warm. You're putting them, placing them over the heat of the fire, this etheric fire. If you don't have a candle or you're not outdoors in nature and don't have like logs to make a, a, a fire ceremony, that's okay. So placing your hands lovingly, imagining, envisioning that these beautiful luminous beings these angels, teachers, and medicine elders are placing their hands over yours, holding your first chakra. And we invite in the mother of the waters, great serpent, the healer, the teacher, to please help us. So your, your hands are over your first chakra, which is your coccyx bone, your tail bone, or the seat of your soul. You can place them on your thighs, between your legs, the pubic bone. And this is the first root chakra, allowing you to shed your old skin and the fear of survival and breathe into the deepest places inside and allow the serpent to wrap her coils of light around you to begin to unwind and unravel your kundalini creatrix energy with beauty on the belly of the mother. Allow yourself to breathe in to this place, a space of freedom and innocence on your return to the garden. And taking another nice deep breath in, rubbing your hands, warming them up, like you might feel the energy tingling and pulsating and vibrating between your hands. Imagine that there's an orb of light or a chi ball between your hands that you can expand 
or shift the shape of and allow your hands to gently touch your second chakra, your sacral svadhisthana. We invited mother, sister, Jaguar here. Jaguar, mother, sister, help us see new frequencies and energies of rainbow light through Jaguar. Allow the Jaguar to introduce you as a rainbow bridge to the world of mystery. Mother, sister, Jaguar, the one who swallows the dying sun. Please teach us how to step beyond fear of violence and death. Help us to live fearlessly, to connect with the life force energy of the jungle, the Andes, the Amazon, everything that is green, that is living, that is thriving as a steward of life force energy. Luminous warrior, Jaguar Puma, Puma, the one that has no enemies in this world or the next. The one that represents life, death, rebirth, and renewal. Aho. And just feel that the green great serpent is moving and spiraling in the figure eight, the infinity symbol horizontally into your first chakra. The second chakra, we have the Jaguar Puma that is embodying your second chakra, empowering your right to freedom, intimacy, sensuality, safe sexuality with your body and with others. So breathing these two power animals in, rubbing your hands together over that, warmth, that heat, that fire of purification. And we invite in the hummingbird. So please place your healing hands over your solar plexus, your third chakra, your power center, your will, your true identity. And we invite in hummingbird. Hummingbird, please enter the solar plexus the stomach, the power centers, the haras, the dantians, and connect us all with our wise, well, and healed ancestors, grandmothers, grandfathers, ancient ones, ancient wisdom. Help us to connect outside of time and space to slip through the curtain to help us remember the ancient ways and the way of the hummingbird. Help us to drink from the nectar of life, the nectar of sweetness and compassion. Teach us to live life fully. So imagining and envisioning, calling in and invoking sweet hummingbird to land safely, gently, into your stomach, your solar plexus power center. So breathing back your powers with sweet hummingbird, flying forwards, backwards, and sideways, cleaning and clearing out all sludge density and debris, all forms of doubt, dead, and disempowerment in your solar plexus right now. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing out longer to calm, soothe, and reset your nervous system, your digestive system. And let's move into rubbing your hands together, lighting that fire, that golden flame. Placing your hands over your heart, we invite in the condor, the eagle, the great archetype of the East, the place of the rising sun, the place of our becoming. Help us to see things the way you do. See the truth, recognize the truth with discernment from this higher perspective, from the vision of clarity and beauty. And the great wings of the condor hold 
hold our hearts, wrap your wings around our heart wings and teach us to see with the eyes of the heart, to see what's next and help us to move out of that nest of comfort and familiarity to spread our own wings so that we may always fly wing to wing with great spirit. A hole on that. And feel the condor just fluttering, fluttering her wings in your heart space, opening, touching, and expanding your own heart wings, wingtip to wingtip. And once again, we're going to rise up move up the energy from sweet pachamama gaya pachapapa breathe that ruby red radiant vitality creativity life force energy all the way up that ruby red light from underground from the inner earth all the way up to your throat placing your hands over your throat we now invite in Huascar, keeper of the lower worlds, into your throat chakra or your Vishuddha. Huascar is the Lord of life and the Lord of death. One of the two sons of the last Incas, the keeper of the medicine teachings, the harmonizing principle of the lower world the dark place of chaos, but also of creative potential, of renewal. The gift of Huascar is harmonizing our relationships with our own shadow. So thanking Huascar, the keeper of the lower world, breathing Huascar into the front, the back, left, right, and the top and bottom of your soul voice, your vocal cords, the center of creative expression, speaking and listening. Aho. Taking another nice gentle breath in and releasing with an ah sound. Ah, on the out breath, long exhalation. Calming your vagus system. Making sure that one hand is always over your heart space. And now let's breathe in Quetzalcoatl, the keeper of the middle world, the sixth chakra and the third eye. Quetzalcoatl, Lord of the dawn, the day bringer, the morning star. You can gaze upon Quetzalcoatl on the screen or imagine what your version of Quetzalcoatl might look like and feel like with your mind's eye. Quetzalcoatl, please bring us harmony and order as you move into heal and harmonize our, our spirit, eyes, second sight centers, our place of our highest visions. Quetzal is the jungle bird, Quetzal is the serpent. Please, with your feathers, with your wing, as a serpent and a bird hybrid being, please help us to see beyond this 3D middle world. Help to awaken our highest visions, to see beyond the density, the confusion and the chaos of this realm and reality. Help us to bring stability, flow, music, dance, or any other forms of healing from the ways of the earth. Allow yourself to breathe into your third eye and to come into right relationship with Quetzalcoatl, no longer having to fight, flight, fear, freeze, Fawn, run, hide, shut down, collapse, submit, or attach to the micromanagers in your life. 
So breathing in and imagining the multicolors of the rainbows of Patakotal, just opening, cleansing, polishing your highest visions, your spirit visions, your third eye, fourth and your fifth eyes. So you can see through all illusion, delusion and confusion with clarity. And now coming up to your seventh chakra, again, warming, heating up and rubbing your hands together over that fire or the flame of the candle. And we invite in Pachakuti, the protector of the upper world. Placing your hands over your crown chakra, connecting with the time to come, the times to come. The Incan king, known as Pachacuti, is your protector and was given this prophecy, the prophecy that the world is going to turn over, to turn right side up. Pachacuti is a keeper of possibilities, organizer of the upper world the concept of circular time. Let's all step outside of linear time and make time stand still. Let's all ask right now, Pachakuti, to bring order, heavenly order, and to come into divine right relationship with Pachakuti, allowing us to recognize what can be changed and changing it before it is born. And we say thank you to Pachakuti and breathing in every color of the rainbow above you, below you, and all around you. And feel those bands of power, each color wrapping around each chakra. Right now, being cloaked in a shawl of protective light and allow each band of power and protection to wrap around you, protecting supporting you and stabilizing you, allowing you to walk fearlessly, freely, and in beauty. So imagine this is all happening because it is, and let's move on to the next, the next activity of light. Beautiful. So right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to be sharing some images of the bands of power, which you'll also be introduced to, and which we also facilitated last Saturday that's still available. And I will include that link if you missed it. So let's close our sacred space now. Place your left hand over your heart to heal your vagal nervous system that connects from the back of your neck, that wraps around your ears, that moves to the front of your throat and neck and moves all the way down the front of your chakras until it reaches your digestive system your belly, your stomach and abdomen. And breathing out much longer with that ah sound and extend your right arm in every direction that we've called in. The directions again are, we're moving in the reverse direction. So we're starting in the east, Facing the east, left hand over your heart, right arm connecting and extending in that direction, in every dimension. Connecting with the spirit of the east, the eagle of freedom, the condor of the mountains. And now we move to the north connecting to hummingbird, new beginnings, and now moving to the west, the direction of the, con of the cougar, the jaguar, 
the Puma facing the west. Thanking the West for the lessons, for the medicine, for the teachings. And now facing the South, which was the first direction that we always call in when we open our personal sacred healing space. Facing the South now, the serpents. Thanking the serpent for allowing you to shed your old skin, to receive these medicine teachings, to be wrapped in coils and spirals of light from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top of you. And if you need to continue working in any particular direction with any power animal ally or archetype you can just thank that animal whether it be the eagle condor the hummingbird the jaguar or the serpent and ask them to stay with you but release their energies for now and tell them it's okay to return to the four corners of the earth thanking them for their energy, guidance, messages, and assistance. And thanking each direction. Asking these allies, these helpers, to enter you and accompany you on your path. So instead of closing that direction, if you feel that you need more medicine, just inhale the spirit of that archetype and ask that archetype to stay with you, to enter into your crown chakra and breathe it down and spread its light and its powers and medicine through your sky and earth chakras, down and up and let it circulate all around you like a microcosmic orbit of power, wisdom, and protection. It's imagining the spirit of these animals moving or flying, gliding, jumping, or just holding you and staying with you, walking with you, accompanying you. And now, hands down, ground and anchor all of this light, this healing, this medicine onto a strong fifth dimensional crystalline grid that supports you. Thanking Mother Earth, bowing, kissing the heart, the womb, the belly of Pachamama Gaia with the soles of your feet chakras. Allowing yourself to take full responsibility as a guardian and earth keeper in this dimension. Bowing down with gratitude and now standing up and rising up to the skies, the clear blue skies and the heavens, the sun, father, grandfather, son, grandmother, moon, mama Kila. Inti Tatia, the star nations, the Palladians, angels, and the ancient Lycas, elders. Thank you. We say Ahum. And we say thank you. Apa Chekta. Apa Chekta is an ancient Keshu and Andean prayer that means gratitude. We speak these words, this prayer with reverence after taking a long journey. When we feel that we are on our way, we're getting close to arriving at the top, the peak of the mountain on a very long, rough journey. 
Great spirit, thank you. Apachekta. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Surely you must have carried me on this journey. I am deeply grateful to you or in oneness with you. I am, I am that I am. And allow us to all gather around this sacred fire right now, warming up our hands and our hearts. And now I invite you to take a moment, drink some water or a cool drink, beverage, something to hydrate and refresh you, to help you stay alert and to come back to this present moment in the here and now. I'm just going to check in with each and every one of you. Please chat in how you're feeling now and how you were able to, thank you, experience this journey. This is just a taste of the sweetness, like a smorgasbord or a sampler of a good life, of a greater future, one filled with ease and grace. Thank you. So beautiful. Let me know how you've shifted energetically and how you felt before the call and how you're feeling now. Thank you, sweetheart. Nice to see you. All right. So well, let's go right into what you can expect now. Calmer. Yes. Oh, thank you, sister. I appreciate you so much. So starting next week, next Saturday, so a week from today, more present. Yes, for sure. Totally. Thank you so much for that feedback. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the rights, the nine rights and what you can expect to receive over the next four weeks, starting next Saturday, July 30th at 12 noon Eastern time. The healer rite is about connecting you to a lineage of luminous beings and to awaken the healer within you. Thank you. Someone else is saying that they feel uplifted and optimistic, powerful process. Ooh, getting the chills. Oh my God, nice to see you. It's been forever. I was just thinking of you the other day. Oh, so that's he the healer rite. It's about awakening your inner healer and connecting you to this very ancient, old, long, long line, endless line of luminous healers, this lineage. These are our spiritual ancestors. Uh, right number two are the bands of power. Um, so I'm gonna ask my assistant, if you can just please um, type in the link for the bands of power initiation. That's a standalone initiation that sets up a, a very strong container of preparation to receive all nine rights. So it's recommended that you receive the bands of power and it's still available on the replay. So my assistant is going to just chat that in. If you click on it, it's available uh, on my website. Yay. So this is five luminous belts or bands of power. And they're all sewn, stitched and woven in, into your luminous energy field. And this is for essential protection. I know that when I received it, I felt completely different after. I mean, I felt like everyone was just kinder and um, just treated me differently. I, I just, not, like nothing really bothered me like it used to. I wasn't quite as overly sensitive to noises or harsh energies or lower vibrations around me. I just kind of like accepted and allowed it to pass through me. So this is really a gift. Yeah, I could, someone's saying I could surely use the bands of power. And once they're in, once they're installed, they're always on. So it's up to you to grow them with the fire, with the fire element. 
So the next one is the harmony rite. And this is when the powers of seven archetypes, the ones that I just introduced you to, are seated into your earth and sky chakras to connect you with the guidance and protection of the serpent, the jaguar, hummingbird, eagle, condor, and the keepers of the lower, middle, and upper worlds. And this is about healing and harmonizing, expanding your consciousness from above you to below you. Yes, you'll also be receiving another band of power, which is right number two. But it is recommended by Alberto to offer it first as a starting point so that you could receive and be more open for the, the seeds from each of the nine initiations that follow to more deeply penetrate into your inner garden. The fourth rite is a see, seer's rite. And these are extra cerebral pathways of light that are installed into your third eye, but also into the back of your third eye, which is your visual cortex. And it also connects you with your heart chakra. And this will awaken your telepathic or psychic abilities, your gifts, your superpowers to perceive the invisible world of energy and spirit with more clarity, with deeper perceptions from a higher perspective. And that's the inner seer's right. Uh, the fifth is a day keeper's right, which connects you to a lineage of master healers from the past. And this right helps you begin your inner feminine journey. So this helps to empower and awaken and rebirth your divine feminine and to step beyond fear and practice or embodying peace. Um, so this right is about connecting you with the nustas or the goddesses of your seven chakras. And each one resides in a different dimension and direction, but they all come from the spirit of the mountains, rivers, lakes, and waters of Machu Picchu, of Lake Titicaca, in Cusco, in Peru. Now, if you come from a line of disempowered females, then the daykeeper's right will help to empower your ability to awaken your own inner shamanista and curandera, herbalist, wise woman, medicine keeper, doula, rebirther. The sixth one is the wisdom keepers, right? Which connects you to a lineage of luminous beings from past and future. And this is about healing the wounds of the, of the masculine. So healing the masculine to become more sensitive, healing the patriarchy, healing the, the wounds of father, grandfathers, the men in your life, father figures, um, all the men, brothers, partners, lovers, husbands, boyfriends. And this is steeped in the medicine teachings as well, so that you are reacquainted and you can heal relation your relationship with all men ah to honor the goddess that felt good just saying it beautiful so right number seven is the earth keepers right connecting you to a very very long lineage and this is going back to uh to the shamans from the ice age from siberia that actually handed this down past this torch on to the incas and pre-incan shamans so this right will help you to become a seer a dreamer and an earth keeper helping you to take full responsibility to care and advocate for the earth better, helping you to eat better, to, to, to help um, the trees, the plants, the stones, the rocks, all forms of life 
in the spirit of animism. So helping you to understand that all plants, minerals, animals, all nature spirits and elementals have a consciousness. So helping you to connect with the earth, with Gaia and the inner earth to rebirth herself, to stay strong and um, to never run out of resources. And star, the star keeper's right is right number eight. And this right anchors and keeps you safe in these times that were foretold in 2012 to evolve our physical bodies and beings our carbon-based cells into crystalline rainbow luminous light beings or homo luminous ones and the last right is the creator right and this is all about stewardship right this is all about being one of the 144,000 light workers and way showers and really connecting with earth, with stars, with pure potential, but also connecting to the star nations and the angels, as well as the earth beings. I just want to read you a little bit more here about the rites. So just to recap, the healer's right is about connecting you to that lineage of luminous healers, awakening the healing powers in your own hands so that everything you touch and everyone you touch is blessed. And this happens with visitations and interventions from the luminous ones, even while you're sleeping. The bands of power we spoke about, they act as filters that break down any negative energy that comes toward you, even if you missed it or are clueless into one of the five elements. So instead of any negative forces weighing you down or creating sickness, illness, or heaviness, they actually make you feel better. They, feel, they feed your luminous energy field with light. So they heal you instead of hurt you. And I love that about the bands of power because they're always on. You don't have to do anything to turn them on. Just feed them and, and cultivate them, right? And grow them. And then the harmony, right? We talked about it's connecting you with a transmission from all seven archetypes into all of your chakras from the lower, middle, and upper worlds of protection. The seer right we spoke about, it's awakening your inner seer, connecting your third eye and your heart. The daykeeper right is the vibration of angels and archangels to grow into or rebirth yourself as a daykeeper, to call upon your ancient altars, to bring balance to the earth and harmony to call on the sun to rise each and every day to bring all humans into peace and balance and harmony as a midwife, herbalist and curandera. It's really about healing your inner feminine, stepping beyond fear, resistance, doubt, and really embodying peace in your entire being. And then the wisdom keeper, Again, this is what I love about this, right? Is it's going to connect you with the snow capped um, mountains and the distant memories of our ancestors from the Himalayas, from the past and the future, from the lineage of luminous teachers that you already know, that you've already studied with, that have already initiated you as a wisdom keeper. And it's really empowering and healing your inner masculine to provide a safe space for you, to give you a sense of um, safe refuge in your own inner sanctuary, to care for your needs, to support you, to ground you, to empower you, 
with a healthy masculine medicine. And then the earth keeper, right? Eight, once again, it's about becoming a steward, connecting with the archangels, the archangels, the stars, the sun, and our local star, dreaming the world into being, not falling into the spell of disharmony, pain, suffering, and dis-ease from the collective. That's such an important right. And the last right, the Starkeeper right, uh, anchoring you safely into the time after the great change and helping you to evolve even faster into a homo luminous being that ages uh, well, where the aging process is slowed down, your DNA is reinformed, and you become more resistant to dis-ease. Actually, that was the eighth right. The ninth right and final right is the creator right, the creatrix right. And that's just about a, developing a greater sense of responsibility and accountability, appreciating the smallest grain of sand to the largest cluster of galaxies in the universe. You're receiving a direct transmission from spirit. And then after you receive all nine rights, you get to transmit these rights from person to person, bowing down forehead to forehead, touching the heads and the hearts of all beings with this love, the energy of love, and really allowing yourselves to embody these rights and to be touched and blessed by angels and wisdom. Ah, so this is what I am excited and honored to bestow upon you, these blessings. So let me just give you a couple of details on how you can join me there. <clears throat> okay, so let's come back. Beautiful. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy to stay on for a few more minutes to answer your questions. So, you know, whether you receive the moon I key rights or not, you can receive them over and over again, just like Reiki attunements, just because you become a Reiki master. Um, that doesn't mean that you, uh, that it's like a, what is that expression? One and done. <laughs> um, so you can experience and deepen into these rites over and over and over again, like a refresher, like a reboot, excuse me. <clears throat> okay. So when you say yes, you'll get to experience each right, learn about its history, the benefits, the significance of each specific right uh, and connect with the energy of the right before you even receive it. And then you'll receive the rights. You know, you'll watch it live. And then again, as often as you'd like on the replay. So you can keep receiving the energy of each transmission over and over again, while you're just sitting and breathing in sacred space. You'll also learn how to give the rights to others who are suffering how to work with a pie stone, which is like a portal or a vortex of other world energies from other dimensions. And actually, this is what a pie stone looks like. Um, okay. And you'll also, when, well, after you receive all nine rights, I'm going to give to you a pie stone as well as a certificate of completion that will allow you to bestow these rights onto others. So you'll also learn how to meditate with the animal allies and archetypes. So it will be two uh, weeks for each chakra. So altogether, after you receive all nine rights, you will be just connecting with the energy of each animal ally and archetype for each chakra. And so the healing will continue even after the nine rites are given. 
This way you'll be able to feel and deeply experience their gifts, their medicine, their teachings, and all of these life-changing benefits. You'll be given homework each time I offer a right. Audio and video meditations with the files, with PDF transcripts, with the lessons that you could follow along at home. Each session will include time for Q&A, for integration, for anchoring each energy process. And then I'll be sending you a, a downloadable digital Munaiki course manual, which is completely comprehensive. It not only has these rites, but other Incan and pre-Incan healing processes as well as meditations, and other types of rituals and ceremonies that you can perform on your own or with others. So besides all the instructions and learning how to manage your energy field, how to clear your chakras of heavy energy, and how to illuminate your energy field, your aura of any density or disruptions, uh, you'll receive the certification. And also, if you want, you, there's an option to sign up to really dive deeper with me in a one-on-one -on -one private shamanic energy medicine session. It'll be a 60-minute session, and we'll really get to the root, the cause, and the core of whatever wounds or illnesses physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever issues our imprints are still playing out in your life that you keep attracting and recreating. So we'll be really giving you a soul retrieval, deep shamanic journey and empowering you on how you can use these energy medicine tools and practices on your own. So I just want to say thank you, Apa Chikta. And let's go to the next screen. <clears throat> the dates are starting next Saturday, July 30th, August 6th, the 13th and 20th. Uh, it is 12 noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time. It'll be for two and a half hours. One time payment is was $397. And Great Spirit said, make it $297 and save everyone $100, which I am very happy to give to you. It's such a deep honor. I know a lot of people are struggling and in fear about the 3D dollar. And so you can also make a payment arrangement. And thank you, Ronald, you can make a payment arrangement as well. Ronald, just my assistant just uh, typed in the link so you can go ahead and grab your seat right now. Um, yeah, and whether you can attend live or on the replay it is fine. If you have a scheduling conflict, do your best because remember you'll be receiving the audio and video lessons and replays. So you won't be missing anything because we know that there is there isn't anything there is isn't time or space so you could receive everything at a distance. So whether you can make some of it or you can't make any of the live calls is totally fine because Zoom technology will always offer you a replay. And these are downloadable. I don't set an expiration date like many other healers and teachers do. So this is a lifetime free access to this course. So that means that if you miss any of it the first time around, you can listen on the second time, a third time, and so forth. So again, 397, or you can make two payments of 150 each. Um, yeah. And again, can you scroll down, Ronald? If you'd like to take advantage of the offer where you'll also receive a bonus and take advantage of the option of working with me privately for an hour deep dive session. 
Uh, that was originally $497. It's now $397, which is $100 savings. You can make two payments as well for that option. And if these are still difficult for you to afford, please send me a private email. You could send it to my email address, bonsinalifehealing at gmail.com. And let me know your situation. If you're on a fixed income, we're going to see how I can accommodate you better. Whether that means a three-part payment plan, whatever that means, I'm willing to work with you. Okay, because I never want to let finances stand in the way of your healing. So again, Ronald, did you also send the message in the chat box for the bands of power? The bands of power is really, really important. I would say that that's a great pre prerequisite. But if you can't do that, you'll get it in the four week program. So that's okay. Um, so Ronald, I think you chatted that in earlier. And now I'm going to see if anyone has a question, so you could chat it in. Um, yeah, the womb rights, that's going to be offered separately. Um, some people call it the 13th right, and some people call it the 10th right. And that will be offered separately. Thank you for asking. Hold on, let me just, you're welcome. Yes, it's the same lineage as um, it's Munaiki. There's only one Munaiki lineage. Um, same lineage as Alberto the Logo. This is the one that I received from another teacher, did not receive it from him directly. I, that would have been nice, but uh, <laughs> I think he was a little busy. So once you receive the nine rights, you can pass it on to others, yes. And yes, the bands of power do come with the Munai Key four week program. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. And then I think we are done for today. Um, three new messages. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you so much, sister. So my assistant just. Uh, typed in the link for the bands of power, uh, which is pretty reasonable and it's a two and a half hour program. So I definitely would recommend that. Again, you can download the replay, which is free and listen to it forever. There is no expiration date on that. Yeah, I've been initiated for quite a while now. Thank you for asking. And you know what? It just came so, so naturally. Um, just like with Reiki, if you're called to it, if you're ready, the teacher will show up. And I was lucky enough to study with uh, Pampa Meseok, uh, Earth Keeper, who, is, who studied for seven years uh, the sacred rites. Um, and the manual is also coming directly from this medicine woman. So actually I had two different teachers and you know, this is something that can be offered in person or at a distance. When you feel the energy, there's nothing else like it. Your life will completely change. Your life will shift no matter what and you will start a process of purification you will start to be able to let go of the old and any patterns or programs, behaviors, thoughts, or feelings of inauthenticity. So whatever's not working for you anymore, that you've been clinging and grasping and holding on for dear life, you'll be able to let that fall away for something greater to rebirth deep inside of you. These are seeds of power, wisdom, protection, and, and these seeds will be planted into each of your chakra. And it's up to each of us, it's our responsibility to grow them, to fertilize them, 
to water them, to care for them in a whole new way. So thank you so much for joining. If you have any other questions that you might think of later, do, did I ever work with Kahuna, with the Hawaiian Kahuna S, with the Kahunas? Uh, I did work with someone uh, who is a Huna healer, uh, and I have facilitated and still continue to facilitate a lot of inner child work with Ho'oponopono. Uh, and kahunas. We always call in the hunas and kahunas with accelerated light healing, as you know, for years. Um, because these are the ancient ones, the storytellers that help us to tell a new true story, helping us to shed the skin to kind of uh, tear up those old contracts and versions of us um, that we've been taught, the false identities, the stories. So the hunas and kahunas are the peacekeepers, the way showers, but the ones that can point us in a different direction, that can help us to forgive ourselves and others. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. I look forward to playing with you starting next Saturday. And thank you all for making the time for yourselves and for each other and for the planet to receive these nine rites of Munaiki. I love you, bless you, and Namaste. See you next week.